Good afternoon and welcome back to the workshop. We are still pre-baby arriving, but who knows when this video is going to get out. I thought it'd be interesting to catch you up with a few of the things I've been doing around the workshop since I last made a video. So let's get on with that. I've done a few bits and bobs while I haven't been filming. First one was to drill and tap some holes in this mounting plate, which fixes to the boiler. Uh, I also tapped these holes in the cylinder casting, or the cylinder machining. Um, and also on the covers. So some of these are um, clearance holes for those those holes in the cylinder, and the other ones are tapped straight in here because um, they're, they're non-functional, they just look nice. Did it on both of those, so that's done too. I also machined another of the steam and uh, water gauge bushes. There's another one there. The components you can see here are specifically noted by um, Fairfax engines that they can all be built from the same uh, piece of one inch diameter, 12 inch long piece of brass. And this gives you enough to do each of these things. This is the uh, crankshaft bearing. Here is the cylinder, cylinder covers, and these two pieces here. And one of these pieces should be long enough to build the cylinder block. You can see here, you meant to mill it from round so you don't have to buy anything. Unfortunately, when I was doing this, I ended up using a quarter inch uh, end mill, or maybe a five sixteenths end mill, to try and get the cone out of the bottom of the center drill, like here, um, and I took it in too deep. So now I have a quarter inch or so of oversized bore there. So I'm gonna review the drawings and see if I can get away with it, but I think I'm gonna to have to replace this. And if I'm gonna replace it, I might as well replace it with square stock to make life easier for myself. That's a bit annoying. It's important not to be disheartened if you're not that interested in the steam toy. Certainly at the moment it's my focus because I feel that with the limited time available I have in my shop, I should be able to bring that to completion even when baby's here. Uh, whereas I think with the five inch gauge locomotive, that's gonna be a project over a much longer period. I haven't yet clocked the vice in, so excuse all of this, but you can see here with the removal of the this back portion, which was to catch the, the coolant overflow, how much space we've now got at the back. If I uh, drop this down, so that I'm not gonna affect the, uh, the dial indicator too much, um, I, can, I can bring this back to uh, a, a position that's much further than, uh, than before. So excusing the fact that this is already pushed back a fair bit, you know, with this, this dog leg arrangement, um, I can now you know, come almost all the way back to somewhere like here, um, which means I've got a much wider area to, to do machining in. I can almost take the full capacity of the vise, whereas before I had only the first maybe inch and a half. So I think that's been pretty successful as well. One massive relief I had was getting the locking nut off of the horizontal arbor here. Um, this was something which was jammed pretty bloody hard on after all the uh, axle box machining. Uh, I couldn't get it off at all. Um, I, I, I tried banging it off, I tried heating it and nothing would work. In any event, I got myself a, a nice tight fitting one inch cross flats spanner. This is a Godot one and had it with the uh, the locking nut in the vise here and then cranking around on the top. And you can see in the past, someone has tried to do the reverse. This is pretty chewed up. So I don't really know what I can do about that. That feels like something that needs to be welded and then machined down. Any ideas on the, the best way to fix this? Uh, please let me know. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to weld. <laughs> That's probably uh, the first problem there, but um, I think that could do with some smartening up. This is my Bernard three jaw self centering chuck. Uh, and I had this, got this with the lathe. Um, and I've noticed while I've been using it, some, some weird behavior. Um, you probably can't see this too well, but actually this, this rocks a little bit. And it's not super tight, but it, it definitely rocks. And if I really clamp it down, then um, there's, there's not much rock in it, but I've noticed this is the smallest uh, feeler gauge I've got, which is one and a half foul. And I can actually get this um, 
you know, some, some ways into the jaws, uh, on all of the jaws. So there's a bit of bell mouthing going on, um, which is, although the, the faces of these, the inside faces of these jaws are hardened, um, in general, they can they can start to wear down, uh, but also if you've got something that's gripped right in the tip here and you really crank it, it can kind of bend and distort the jaws as well. Um, either way, uh, I think it's probably about time to to upgrade this uh, self-centering chuck. And here's an example of where that's occurred. Um, this piece was being held in the chuck in this position, and I was drilling and uh, tapping the end. Um, it started to spin in the chuck and as you can see it's created a really nice smooth section here where the back of the jaws because they were being pinched like that the back of the jaws have grabbed it really well but the front uh, hasn't been in contact at all so i think it makes sense to to sort out the uh, the bell mouthing on these jaws now i know you can grind them in situ with a lathe spider um, i just don't think i'm really up to that um, and even if you do grind it in situ, you end up with a radius on the inside face of these teeth, which then mean you have to use packing material to ensure it doesn't mark anything if the radius of the part is larger than the radius that you ground it to. So a replacement Pratt Bernard chuck is on the way. What you can see here is an unboxing video that I didn't actually record. Here is the Pratt Bernard three jaw chuck. You can see it's PB rather than just Bernard. And uh, probably most importantly, it has this recessed thread rather than having a projecting boss with the threads on. So I'll take the three jaw off the lathe and you can compare them. So here's the Bernard chuck. And you can see here, we've got this extra projecting section. So there's uh, probably about another inch or so of thickness on this one compared to the Prat Bernard, which is uh, pretty handy. So in general, they have the same chuck key. On the other one. They have the same chuck key, which is good. Um, this one looks significantly less beat up around the jaw faces. There's there's kind of nothing there really. Um, whereas if we look at the the Bernard jaw, the Bernard jaws, you see it's pretty. Pretty gnarly there. Um, yeah, and, and looking at this, it looks like there's there's no wear at all in here. The, the lands, I guess, the, the flat areas that clamp, um, they're all the uh, the same size all the way down. Whereas on this one, they definitely get wider near the end of the jaws. So let's get on the lathe and test it out. Looks okay to me. 